Caught my husband's best friend cheating with our mutual friend at a hockey game, then found out my husband was okay with it and was cheating too. A couple of days ago I went out to a hockey game with a friend of mine, I'll call her Janelle, and my boyfriend's friend, I'll call him Scott. Originally my boyfriend was supposed to come with but he ended up getting called into work to cover a night shift. So last minute my BF asked Scott if he wanted to take his place, to which he said yes. We've all gone out together before. Janelle knows of Scott but we haven't actually all spent time together just the three or four of us. It's always been in bigger group settings or with just my BF and I and Scott and his wife or my BF and I and Janelle and her husband. Remember that. Scott and Janelle are both married and they aren't married to each other. This is important. So we go out for dinner before the hockey game to get some wings and a few beers because the beers at the arena are insanely expensive. We get a little wobbly and get to the game and I notice Scott and Janelle kind of getting a little close, she's laughing a little more than usual, he's getting a little more handsy but she's not pushing him away. I mean, Scott is funny but he's not that funny. So I'm trying to enjoy the game and sort of ignore whatever it is they think they're doing. Then Scott and Janelle say like hey, we should go out for drinks after and I'm like hey. I don't really want to at this point because I've had a long work week but I honestly don't really trust them alone together, I just have this gross feeling. So I feel pressure to say yes. Janelle's like don't worry. We'll just go for one and head home. And I'm like okay, one I can do. So we go to this bar across the street from the arena after the game. But instead of one, they both go on to have about four or five more. I'm really pissed off at this point because I'm tired and practically sober and literally the third wheel. They are so into each other it's disgusting and I'm getting an Uber ready to pick me up because I want no part of this. I also try to ask them about their partners and their kids any chance I can get, like oh, how's so and so doing, or it was so and so's birthday just last month, what did you get up to? But they weren't taking the bites. At this point, I'm also texting my husband everything that I'm seeing but because of the work he does, he doesn't have access to his phone until a certain period during his shift. So I know he's not going to respond right away. So the Uber comes and I'm like okay guys I'm out of there. And they're like oh can we just catch a ride and then we'll pay the difference and I'm like yeah, whatever. So they get in the backseat of the Uber and I'm in the front. We're on the way to my house and I go to look back and they are making out hard with each other. Like hard. The Uber gets to my house and I just leave without even saying goodbye to them. I go inside and I'm trying to sleep but I literally can't stop thinking about their families. I thought I knew Janelle. We've been friends since our first year in university. I've been to both of their weddings and I've held both of their little babies in my hands. I got her a job with my dad at his company and she's the graphic designer there. I cannot believe that they've both done this. I'm regretting the fact that I call them both friends. They always say that you're a part of the company you keep around you and now I'm second guessing our friendship. It's about 3 AM when my phone goes off and because I'm in a light sleep, I check out my phone and see that my husband is finally responding to all of my messages. He's just as repulsed as I am. He apologizes for his buddy Scott and he's like I can't believe they did that right in front of you. And I'm like yeah. But like could you imagine if I wasn't there? Like why would they be so into each other with someone who knows their family so well? And he's like yeah, that is weird. And then I'm like should I tell their partners? And he's like no, you should just stay out of it. You don't want to get wrapped up in stuff like that. And I'm like what? I'd want to know if you were cheating on me like that, wouldn't you want to know? And he's like sometimes ignorance is bliss. And then I'm like hmm. Okay, I'll see you when you get home. That whole conversation didn't sit well with me. Ignorance is bliss? WTF does that mean? So I try to bury the fact that my husband just said that and try to get some shut eye. Then the morning comes and my husband gets in early and he's tired and crawls into bed. I'm like telling him that what I saw really shook me up and he's like yeah, that's awful. I can't even imagine. I'm like yeah, I don't think I can just sit on this. I really feel like I have to say something. It's just weighing so heavy on me. And he's like, op, stay out of it. Really? It's none of our business. And I'm like how is it none of my business when they just did that right in front of me. And then he turns to me and we're laying in bed and his voice gets all stern and he's like Janelle and Scott have been seeing each other for the last 7 months and Scott swore me to secrecy to not tell anyone. He asked me if you were cool with it and I said yes. So if you say something to their partners, it means I lied to them. And I'm like why tf would you say something like that and put words in my mouth? Why would you think that's ever okay? And he's like Scott is like a brother to me, I've known him since grade school. He's not happy with his wife. He hates his life. Just let him have this. And I'm like what on earth is going on? So now I'm out of bed and I'm standing there thinking that I literally don't know any of these people. I look at him laying there in our bed and I'm like you may be cool with it, but I'm most definitely not cool with this. So if you still want to be cool with me, you need to make this right and you need to tell Scott and Janelle that they need to get their shit together and come clean with everyone or decide to leave their spouses if they're so dang unhappy. And then I get up and go to our little son and go downstairs to make us breakfast. My husband doesn't say anything else, he doesn't come downstairs, he just goes to bed. I'm trying to enjoy some play time with our son, but in my head I'm like how did all of this just unfold like this? How could Janelle do this to me? Not that she owed me anything, 
But like I feel like I really put my neck out there and got her hired with my dad's company when she couldn't find a job elsewhere. The industry was really saturated at the time. I don't like pulling the my dad owns a company card, I don't like being that person, but she practically begged me to help her out because, at the time, her husband had been laid off and wasn't working, she had just finished school and they had a one year old, and yeah, I just felt bad, and she was a friend, so I couldn't let them suffer like that. I would have wanted someone to help me if they were able. So I end up texting Janelle around lunchtime and I'm asking if she got home okay. And she says, yes. Thank you for such a great night. I hope you had fun. And I was like dude, what was that with Scott? And then I see her typing something out, but then she stops typing. And I sort of wait for her to say something and then I get nothing. Then about a half hour later. She calls me and she's like hey, I thought you were cool with all of this? Scott said that Greg, my husband, told you. I'm like no, he didn't and no I'm not cool with this. How could you do this to Dylan, her husband? She's like everyone has their secrets, op, don't pretend like you don't have any. And I'm like WTF is that supposed to mean? And she's like there's a lot you don't know, op. If you say anything to Dylan, you're going to open up one ugly can of worms. And then I'm like Janelle, WTF? And she's like for real. Mind your own business. I thought you were cool, I thought we were friends. Now I know who my true friends are. And she hangs up on me. I'm literally standing in my kitchen like what the F, did that really just happen? Also, she has no idea who she's messing with. And I text her and I'm like you seem to forget who had your back when you were at your lowest. But if you really want to go there. We can. Okay so then I go upstairs and wake up Greg and tell him the conversation that I just had with Janelle. I'm like WTF does she mean by this and he gets sort of grumpy and mad at me for waking him up and he's like why are we even having this conversation right now? I told you to leave it alone and now you've just pissed her off and then he looks at his phone and sees that both Scott and Janelle have left him voicemails and text messages. And he's like great. They're probably both livid. And then he gets up and he's like damn it, op, why couldn't you have just left it alone? And I said because it's the right thing to do. If she's lying to me about this then what else could she be lying and hiding from me? And he's like just leave it to me, I'll give them a call and calm them down and I'm like we shouldn't even be having anything to do with these people. And he's like these people are our friends and I'm like how can we associate with people who do this to their loved ones and make us lie for them and hide the truth from people? And he goes I'll talk to the both of them and get this all taken care of, just don't talk to either of them anymore and stay out of it. Am I overreacting? Should I tell their spouses? What should I do? Update 1. Hi. I'm back. Not too long after my first post I go NC with both Scott and Janelle. I delete them both off social media. And I tell Greg to not have anything to do with them and he says sure at first. But then legit a week later he says he's going out for beers at the local pub here with some buddies to watch the game and I'm like okay who's going to be there and he names off some guys and then also mentions Scott and I'm like okay well we already agreed that you weren't going to see Scott again and he goes how am I going to stop seeing him when we have mutual friends that we've bone grown up with? And I'm like Ike. Tell the truth and out him to everyone and he's like most of the other guys know they just don't have an issue with it like you do and I'm like wow. Don't bother coming home tonight. And then we get in a big fight and he packs an overnight bag and leaves. Well he texts me about 2 hours later and he's apologizing and telling me that he realizes just how bad Scott really is and he doesn't want something like this getting in the way of our relationship. So I'm just about to apologize too but I'm also on Snapchat and I go on to the location settings. I see that Greg is still sharing his location. And it's live. But it's not at the local pub. It's at Scott's house. Then I call Greg and he doesn't pick up, and he says sorry hun, it's really loud in here with them game and I'm like I know you're at Scott's and then he calls me but I don't answer. Then I text him and tell him that he can stay at Scott's. And I tell him he's no better than his cheating at SS. So that's where we're at. Update 2, I'm back. Greg is still at Scott's. I can see his location still there. It had only been 2 days. But the weird thing was that Greg hasn't tried to reach out to me after that text I sent him you're no better than Scott's cheating at SS. He hasn't even tried to call me. So naturally this enraged me. I was so pissed off that I hadn't heard from him and that he hadn't even attempted to try to fix things that I ended up texting Janelle's husband and telling him everything. He texted me back right away and said, thank you, op, and that was sort of it. But then that same night, I get a text from Janelle and it's simply just a screenshot of him talking to her and Scott in a group chat and they're talking explicitly with each other about what they plan on doing to Janelle. And this was dated 4 months ago. I literally dropped my phone. Then more screenshots come through and it's the same sort of thing but 2 months ago. And then more that happened just recently. Then she sends me a text and says now I'm spilling his secrets bitch. So I fucking saved all those screenshots and sent them to him and told him we are over. So fucking over. I knew it was fishy of him to defend them like that and try to take care of it and stay out of it what a cheating lying at SS son of a bitch. Then he tries calling me but I'm already on the phone with my mom and dad and I'm telling them what happened and my dad's like I know exactly what to do. So within the coming weeks. He starts an investigation with Janelle and gets her written up for things that she's been fucking up at work. Apparently she's also been lying on her timesheet so that's huge. 
People have been saying that they're having problems with her for quite some time but he didn't want to say anything to me because he thought we were best friends. So for quite some time he's been protecting her at work too. But now I'm like no dad kick that bitch to the curb. He also gave me the name of a client friend of his who's a lawyer and we're starting the process up with that now. As for Scott, I have his wife on Instagram and sent her the screenshots that Janelle sent me and apologize that she has to find out this way. I said I'm here for her if she needs. Update 3, I had my dad serve Greg divorce papers and my dad said he tore them apart in front of him. I also changed the locks in the house and changed the passcodes to the garage door. Greg tried to come by once and freaked out calling me after he realized he couldn't get in. I also called his parents and sent them the same screenshots. They are totally on my side and not speaking to him. He's been totally cut off by everybody except his loser friends who think it's okay to lie and cheat. I also heard that he had a big fuck up at work and it cost the company a ton of money. So there's that. I checked in to see his location from time to time just for curiosity's sake. He's been staying at Scott's. That's in poor taste. Also Janelle has been let go. I'm just trying to enjoy life with our little boy. I've gone for full custody and alimony. I've also been brainstorming starting up my own business, but I'm honestly just trying to take it slow. I'm just trying to get as much cuddles in with my son as I can and get through all of this and just do my own thing and hang around people that want to do good and be good. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Caught my wife cheating but I still gave her a second chance, but she lied to her parents about the reason for our divorce, so I told them the truth and they kicked her out. My now ex-wife, 35, and I, 35 male, were together for 9 years with one of them being spent as a married couple. The two of us didn't have kids but we had two dogs that we loved to pieces. One of them was disabled so they required a little bit more care than the other but that didn't matter to me. We had our fights and issues over the years, but it was nothing it didn't seem like we could work on. I foolishly believed that our issues were something that could be fixed. I went as far as to suggest counseling to which my ex-wife agreed. However, to successfully do couples counseling, both people have to be willing to work with the therapist. I was more than willing to work with the therapist and was upfront about my issues. Most of the time she would just let me talk. A few times my ex-wife didn't even show up so I was left there sitting awkwardly with the therapist who felt bad for me. Despite this, I wasn't willing to give up. Then I discovered she was cheating on me and it was like a huge wake-up call. It was a complete accident that I discovered it. She said she was going to hang out with a friend for the day so I spent the day doing some chores. This included going to the grocery store to grab some things for dinner. When I was there, I ended up bumping into the actual friend she was supposed to be out with. I asked the friend where my wife was. Her friend seemed confused so right then I knew something was up. Why would she lie about hanging out with a friend that she wasn't hanging out with? It was hard to do the grocery shopping when my mind was focused on where my wife was but I managed to do it. When I got home, I waited for my wife to come home. She came in the door, greeting me like nothing was wrong. I confronted her right away because I couldn't wait to talk about this situation. When I told her I ran into her friend, her face paled. She said she made a mistake but I didn't buy it. I pushed and pushed. Eventually, my ex-wife told me that she was sexting with this guy she met online. This had been going on for nearly the entire time we were married, which devastated me. That night was the first time they met. How romantic, I sneered. Normally, it wasn't like me to be sarcastic, but I was hurt and just so angry. Here I was trying to work on this relationship with my wife. I was even willing to go to counseling. Meanwhile, she is messing around with this guy. I looked back at all the time she was on the phone and laptop. It didn't seem odd to me before but now I realized how intense it was. Her first reaction was to beg me to give us another try. We were best friends, she said. She couldn't live without me. When I pointed out that the two of us were already seeing a therapist, my wife said she was going to try this time. In an act of desperation, I gave her a second chance. Then three days later I caught her talking with a guy. She said they were just friends and it was difficult to cut off a friendship. My wife claimed they had to taper off slowly. It was at that point I knew my marriage and entire relationship was over. I told her that under no circumstances would I give her another chance. The moment I said that it was like a flip switch. My wife told me fine and moved out. She ended up staying with her parents. We rented a house so at least we didn't have to deal with that. I was grateful she was just quick to move out and not put up a fight. Our dogs were confused at first and desperately missed her. I did my best to help them transition to the new environment. Pets can be like people in certain ways. They get separation anxiety and react to sudden changes as much as we do. Once she was out, I kept trying to get her to take the rest of her stuff out of the house. I didn't want to look at it anymore. After weeks of badgering her, I got sick of waiting, put the boxes in the back of my car, and went to her parents' house. I had no animosity towards her parents. They always treated me nice so while they were surprised to see me, they seemed happy. Her mom said she was sorry for the divorce and said sometimes people just fall out of love. This confused me so I asked my former mother-in-law what my ex-wife had said was the reason for the divorce. My ex left out the cheating bit so I felt it was my duty to tell her parents the unabashed truth. 
They seemed shocked so I offered to give them evidence if they didn't believe me. No part of me felt bad for telling them the truth. My ex should have been upfront with them. They were good people but figured they would support their daughter despite this because it was their daughter. Oh, how wrong I was. I ended up discovering through mutual friends that my former in-laws confronted my ex about what I said. She denied it but when they said I offered to show them proof, she admitted that she did step outside the marriage. Her parents then told my ex that she had 30 days to find a new place. At the end of those 30 days, she would have to get out regardless if she found other accommodation. My former mother-in-law did reach out to me to apologize, saying they didn't raise their daughter to have terrible morals like that. I accepted the apology even though it wasn't their fault. How were they to know what their daughter would do as an adult? I got quite a few angry and explicit texts from my ex after her parents kicked her out. She told me that she could be homeless and shamelessly demanded that I let her stay in our old apartment. At least until she got on her feet. My response was to tell my ex to go stay with her app. If he cared about her so much then surely he'd let her stay. I blocked any possible numbers she could contact me from and started the next phase of my life. Trying to heal from this relationship was by far the most difficult thing I had ever tried to do. I had my family and friends beside me but they could only do so much because unless you've been through this situation, it was hard to relate. However, spending time with those who care about me, going to therapy for just myself, and just taking one day out of the week to take a walk or something proven to help. I still am in the middle of the healing process but I know I've come a hell of a long way since first discovering her affair. As far as I know, my ex still isn't talking to her parents and is couch surfing until she can officially move into her new apartment. There are times she still tries to reach out to contact me, but outside of official channels regarding our divorce, we have no reason to talk. Let the app have my ex. He may think he has won the ultimate prize but this couldn't be further from the truth. My ex is about as far from a prize as you can get.